Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and are you counted? Today, we are going to visit with the census people. And you know, you must be counted. It is absolutely the most imperative thing you do this year, other than vote, but you can do both. So we are going to talk to Richard Medeiros, right? And he is the project manager for the Native Hawaiian Advancement. I'm getting it right. Richard, <laughs> there you are. Okay, uh, tell, let me get the title right. Richard, tell me your titles I can get sure. it right. I am the program manager for the Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement, overseeing the Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander Complete Count Committee for the census. Okay, now. Uh, Native Hawaiian, let's, let's identify that because I just got an email saying that there's a hearing on tomorrow and, and it's about protecting Native Hawaiians at the legislature. So what's the difference in Native Hawaiian and Hawaiians? So for Native Hawaiians and the the one that you're referring to, I believe, is the Senate committee hearing tomorrow on the resolution for Hawaiian national status. Yes. Um, Native Hawaiians, the two different designations are those that are 50% and over, which qualify to be beneficiaries of the Department of Hawaiian Homelands and to receive those benefits. Um, other Native Hawaiians are anybody who has Hawaiian ancestry or has ancestral ties to, um, to the indigenous people of Hawaii. Uh -huh. So in what Doing, we're trying to count all Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders um, because we see the similarities in the needs, especially when it comes towards education and health care. And the importance is this is a very quickly growing community, uh, but it's also a community that doesn't traditionally respond to the U.S. Census. And the data that is collected by the census is very important when it comes to getting programs and funding out to the communities and to the need specific to Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders. So by not responding, would that be the group that says they're not American? Is that the reason they don't respond? There are some that will not respond because of that. And to that argument, I would say, please respond anyway. The census does not count American citizens. It counts the population within the United States and all of its territories. Uh, one of the ways that we can definitely help um, the situation for Native Hawaiians everywhere is to be counted so that the United States can see that that is a population that does exist. Um, but when it comes to general, we want to make sure everybody's counted because there's a lot of funds that go to our communities that we may or may not be getting because of a lack of participation. Historically, uh, Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders are deemed hard to count um, because we live in communities that aren't necessarily as engaged or in some way, sometimes we live in communities like where I live in Nanapuli, where I have a physical address, but mail doesn't deliver there. So those addresses are often forgotten, but we wanna make sure that just because you weren't on that list that you are still counting, because there are other ways. What do you mean the mail doesn't, doesn't deliver there? I thought they went uh, everywhere. Yeah, I, my <laughs> whole life, it's a problem. It's a problem I've always faced with where I grew up. Um, because I have a physical address, but we always had to have a PO box because the mail, and I can see from my driveway where the mail ends its delivery, but in rural communities, it doesn't necessarily deliver to every physical address. So the census does update leave, which means they send somebody out and they drop off something at your front door uh, so that you can reply to it, but you wouldn't necessarily get the same letters and postcards that they send um, to all the addresses in the United States. So now, Okay, let's talk about the telephone um, and, and the internet. Now, I do know there are places out there beyond you, not not Nanakuli, but further out where they don't have internet connection. So what about them? Not so necessarily that, Hawaiians, but period. For, yes. So in, in the rural communities that are farther out away from the cities, which we see more on the neighbor islands than we do on Oahu, but it does exist on Oahu. 
Uh, the census will do something called update leave, which means they leave paperwork at your door for you to do. Um, that will include the survey. So you can do the physical survey, put it in the mailbox and send it in that way. Uh, they can also call one of the census numbers um, to do the survey that way. But some of those communities like where I live too, I may have, you know, I may have my cell phone, but reception doesn't always work. <laughs> um, so for those communities, mail is a great way to do it. Um, the other thing is the census eventually, due to the COVID concerns, they weren't as early as they planned to, but they will be sending enumerators to homes uh, to assist people with doing the, the physical forms. So, uh, but now things are getting better, I think, with the COVID, for at least for Hawaii. Yes. So does that mean that they can send more people out? Um, to that, we were in discussions with them yesterday, and they are ramping up that effort. So they are going to be starting that very soon, um, probably within the next couple of weeks. Uh, but, you know, safety is very important to them. And while we've seen a little bit of an uptake in, in cases, I think it's still relatively safe. Um, and you don't have to necessarily be face to face. You can easily be six feet apart and you know, talking about to collect that information. Um, the inf information is very simple. It's things that most people would know off the top of their head, so they wouldn't have to go search for information to, to give to them. What, now, let's talk about Pacific Islanders, because there's so many different islands, and then they're all lumped in together. Uh, tell us, for anyone that doesn't know, how many different Pacific Islanders do we have? How many different islands are they from? I don't mean the number of collective, but how many different mm -hmm. islands um, are they from? A lot. Um, <laughs> I, I couldn't tell you an exact number, uh, but from the work that I've been doing, we've reached out to a lot of uh, groups of people that I didn't even know existed, which is, you know, it's eye-opening and educational for me, uh, particularly when we're seeing some of the Polynesians and Micronesians that I didn't realize were, you know, were their own entities. Um, but that's why it's important to get these people counted so that we know who they are, where they are, and that way we can try to um, give the proper services. Because ultimately, I, I know you mentioned earlier voting, and voting is very important, but census is one of those things that I think is even more important than voting. Uh, because we need to know where our communities are, what the needs of these communities are. Um, Voting and districts, district lines for senators and representatives is based off of census data. Yes. So without census, voting really can't be done properly. And yes, and next year we have a redistricting. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> so they're going to take all of this data that we collect now and they're going to determine the new districts. And if, if districts don't participate properly and they, they don't get their right numbers out, they may gain or lose, you know, political power and authority. Now, you live in, uh, is that a homestead where you live? I live right above a homestead. Um, traditionally, my family were farmers, so um, I still live in a rural area of Nanakuni. So, but that area is growing so much. My goodness, all mm -hmm. the new housing and everything. Uh, yes. And they still, and they don't deliver to the farms. Is that what you're saying? They deliver to a certain area. And then once you get so far up in the mountain, they kind of stop at Forget that point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on. That's, that's and ridiculous. it happens. Uh, we see it a lot on the neighbor islands where the more rural areas, they just, the delivery is poor or non-existent. Um, and that's why you'll see a lot of people have, have PO boxes. Yeah. So when the census sends out their people before the actual forms go out and they verify all the addresses, they don't necessarily mean mailing addresses. But when they do the first mail outs, it only goes to physical addresses that receive mail. So anybody with a PO box doesn't get that initial that initial mail. What so, happens? Okay, so you send out one, and then because they don't have a physical address but you send it to what should be the physical address, right? Yes. And it comes back to you. 
then do you send it to the post office? I mean, to the post office box? They do not. And that's one they of the things forward. we ask in the census to try to, to incorporate PO boxes as well. Um, thus far, we haven't gotten that from them, but that's why they then will send somebody physically to those areas with a little packet. It's in a little, because uh, I, I receive one. It's your census information, the data forms uh, with a code for it, and they put it in a little plastic, white and black and white US census bag, and they leave it on your doorstep. Oh, because I have a neighbor, and we live in Honolulu in this easy and she has a post office box. And I didn't know whether uh, she doesn't use her street address. Mm. And I just wonder about that because this is the heart of the city. Yeah. For that, they would send it to the street address and hopefully, you know, it was received by her. But if not, if you don't respond after so many times, they physically send somebody to you. So even if you do have a physical address that does receive mail, after so many attempts, they, they send somebody physically there to either leave paperwork or to knock on the door to help uh, so, to ask you those questions. So they send it to every postal address, regardless of the name on the... Yes. Okay. All right. That, yes. that makes sense. So every street address gets a, ma a package. In the entire country, yes. Yes. Now that's a big job. It's a huge job. <laughs> and I think that's why they only do it once every 10 years. It takes 10 years to get, <laughs> especially with new developments. <laughs> especially yeah. here in Hawaii. I mean, in the Wainai alone where I live, it is crazy how many new homes are getting built. Yes. Yes, it is, and in which it, it's crazy because the traffic just gets bigger and bigger. Traffic gets bigger and bigger, school sizes, classroom sizes get bigger, but the classroom themselves is the same size. Uh, and that's why we need accurate counts so that when we're doing community planning, we can project that we need this many classrooms for this many kids that will be you know, eventually going to school. If our communities are growing, we want to make sure that that the infrastructure is growing with the population. Yes. Yeah. At Campbell High School, honestly, that is remarkable how that's grown. I remember, you know, I hate to say how old I am, but 50 years ago, <laughs> there was nobody in that school. Well, I, I remember as a boy, you know, whenever we had to go shopping and if we had to go to Waipahu or Pearl Ridge because those were the nearest places to go. When you're driving through what's now Kapolei, it was just, and it seemed like it took forever to get wherever you were going. It, did, it does. <laughs> it still does. My daughter I mean, lives. We had a few I'm, homes in Makakilo, and now you have all of Kapolei built up. When we moved to Makakilo, there was no fire station. And it only went up so far. And the... Um, Lease rent was nine dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was still like that. <laughs> so that's a long time. <laughs> uh, but there was also no Walmart. There were no, no stores. No, 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 school. no, no. The closest thing was the Barbara yeah. Point, the Navy. Mm -hmm. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's that's why I'm amazed. You know. I'm 38 years old and I've seen Kapolei go from just being fields to being a city. So I can only imagine in the next 20 to 30 years how much Hawaii is going to change again. It has. It has changed so much. And the problem is that when you see it every day, you don't see the change until when we shut down and I could drive, I did drive one day and was absolutely loving the highway with no traffic and the air smelled so good. I said, oh my God, this is old white. <laughs> I love it, I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's one of the blessings of COVID that traffic has been much better. Um, it's, yeah. I see families getting together better and, and spending more time together than they did before. It, it, there is a silver lining to this. Yes. 
and especially out your way where the traffic was just and it was such it's such a beautiful drum without the traffic it is the waves were gorgeous and, and it was so uh it's like don't we don't want the traffic back no. <laughs> Yeah, we don't I want know the we need the, the tourists, but we don't. Oh, do we really need all of this? The we don't want them to see how amazing that sunset is out on that coast. <laughs> oh yes, and Waikiki without a whole lot of people. Oh my goodness, it was so beautiful. Hmm. And I talked to a couple of people said they'd never been to Waikiki before. Yeah, I personally I haven't I haven't gone into Waikiki unless I had to for a meeting or anything until a couple of weeks ago. That was the first time I think in my adult life that I went to Waikiki just to walk around. It it, it was so, I just drove down Kaukau Avenue and they were surfing, but there are no mm. rental cars, none of those fancy buses and nobody walking. Everybody was yeah. in the yeah, and it's all local families. It's all local families. In Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. It was, it was absolutely delightful. Now, okay, let me get back to the census. Yes. <laughs> okay. Papa Kaleo. And they were talking at one point, really, about not needing to do the census because of this not being planned or not being American. Is there any difference out there? Um, I think that there's a slight difference. Um, and we've done, we've been trying to educate a lot of people that this, this supersedes being Hawaiian and this supersedes being American. This is counting you as a human being. And that's what's really important here because we want to make sure that our children and those generations get taken care of properly. From a Hawaiian standpoint, another thing that's a big benefit of the census is it helps us with ancestry and genealogy. Uh, your census data, the information you give them is confidential. Some of the data is released 70 to 72 years after that census was taken. And that's how we trace back where our families were a long time ago. So for us, you know, especially Pacific Islanders, we really like to see what where our families were and we like to try to trace our family line and the census is one of those ways to do that we've tried to explain to Hawaiian groups that that's some of the benefits of it the other benefits uh the native Hawaiian health centers those are funded and put where they are based off of census data uh, native Hawaiian school programs immersion schools um, our, our organization the council for native Hawaiian advancement the office for Hawaiian affairs Kamehameha schools they all use census data when they're determining where to do Hawaiian programming, where to build a school, how many children to allow to a program in a certain area. We're all using those projections to try to assist uh, with, with that data. So, um, like I said, I'm, I'm talking to people at Papa Kalea. Oh, yeah. uh, I just wondered if, if somehow, and, and I'm sure they're not the only ones. I, I'm certain that that's not the only um, area that had that issue. So you have spent time to disavow that knowledge notion that that just because they're Hawaiian, that they can, that yes. they will not. Yeah. Yes. So just filling out the census and participating does not does not equate to being a U.S. citizen. It does not equate to you agreeing to that. It doesn't take away from you being Hawaiian at all. Uh, I think it actually adds to it because it allows for us to find out where Hawaiians are so that we know where we should be. Um, for the Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement, we like to do different programming to the Hawaiian communities and we like to know where they are so that I, you know, I, we don't want to do like a language workshop where there's not going to be any Hawaiian people. So we want to see where those people are so that we are doing the right programming in the right areas. Well, well now what about the people that are part Hawaiian and part this and part that and whatnot? That's do you always, get to choose? Um, yes. Um, in the ethnicity section, there are multiple things that you can choose. And we recommend that you choose everything that you are. 
um, because one, we definitely want to see where Native Hawaiians are, but we also would like to see what the mixtures are getting to be, um, because then we can tell statistics and make sure that uh, we're addressing the proper issues that come up with certain ethnicities and certain groups. Uh, we're all aware that some diseases are genetic, uh -huh. so we like to try to prepare for that. So, uh, okay, so you've got all these different ethnic groups in one person. Now, can that person say, well, my mother's this, my father's that, but I'd really like to take the Hawaiian language. I'd really like to study the Hawaiian issues. Can you separate yourself and say, this is what I want to choose? Mm -hmm. I want to learn yes. more about, yeah. Yeah, so the census itself, you choose what you are. There's no, they're not going to be checking with the database to make sure you actually are Hawaiian when you click that box. Uh, they're not going to check if you actually are Native American. Uh, but there are boxes for those different, uh, for different ethnicities. Additionally, if you are something that is not listed in one of those boxes, like if you're, say, Tongan, you can click Pacific Islander, and then there's a uh, space underneath to write down specifically what you are. Oh, so because you've got so many different people from Melanesia, Micronesia, the Marshall Islands, Guam, Saipan. Yes. So they can, if what they what they identify as is not on that list, they can write in what they identify as. So if there's, you're from Guam and you're Chamorro, so is there a place for? There actually is Chamorro listed in a box on the census. Mm -hmm. So Native Hawaiian, I believe Chamorro is on the box. Um, but I do know Tongan is not. So if you're Tongan and you identify as that, you would click Pacific Islander and write in Tongan. And so the Marshall Islands are separate from the Micronesian Islands. Yes, so you can identify exactly as what you are. You can even identify down to the island and the culture that you identify with. Oh, now that's great because there's so many islands out there. Yes, so if they identify as Chukis, they can, they can identify as such. Yes, I did a, a speech for Pacific Islanders, and it took forever because they would translate in four different languages. So, as we are, <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> that was my introduction to these Pacific <clears throat> Islanders. That that mm -hmm. that part, the Micronesian, Melan Micronesian part, uh, with all those different languages. Yeah. yeah, and their languages are all very different. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, but now, uh, the same thing applies in the Asian languages. Mm -hmm. in, in Chinatown, for instance, there's seven, at least seven different languages in our oh, little yes. Chinatown. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, Chinese has so many dialects, just like Filipino has a lot of different dialects. So, oh yeah, and the Filipinos are in every neighborhood in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So you can't pick out one neighborhood and say, well, that's where they are. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no. Now, now, let's go back to the Native Hawaiians, though. Exactly mm -hmm. what do you do as a Native Hawaiian advancement? What, what is your mission? So the Council of Native Hawaiian Advancement is uh, we try to uplift Native Hawaiians in every way that we can. Um, while I manage the census program, we also have many other programs that we do. Uh, in response to COVID, with a lot of our Native Hawaiian crafters not getting to sell their products at the Mary Monarch or the Prince Kuhil Festival, we did an online and televised pop-up makeke uh, for them yeah. to showcase their information and for people to purchase it. Um, I did. We also, yeah, <laughs> I did you. buy something, yeah. <laughs> thank you. So if, if you actually lived in a hard to count uh, census community, we would send you a census message with your order as well. <laughs> oh, now that's smart. So we do that. Um, we do emergency funding programs right now. We have the Kahiel program specific to Native Hawaiians to assist who have been in an emergency situation. We have the Ho'ala mm -hmm. program. Uh, right now, it's just for the for residents of the city and county of Honolulu. Uh, 
uh, to assist them with rent, child care, utilities during um, during the economic recovery during COVID. Uh, we also have our membership. We have our Hawaiian Way Fund. Right now, we're trying to raise money to help Yolani Palace because they're facing their own hardships during COVID. Yes. Uh, so there's a lot of things that we do. Um, it, it, no two days are the same for us. <laughs> well, no, this is this has been a trying time for all of us. <laughs> yes, it definitely has. But the good parts about these trying times is that we have seen people get together in ways that they've never gotten together before. Um, we've seen communities reestablished, people helping each other out, no longer being individualistic, being more communal. I have seen even in, <laughs> I've seen even in, in grocery shopping how everybody's so nice and they talk a to lot each other. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they actually talk to each other. And it's just I, I'm loving this. I'm I hate to say that. I know there are a lot of people who feel housebound and closed up, but I'm in, really enjoying this way of life. Yeah, I am too. Like I said, I, I find people are just nicer in general. Um, that sense of community has definitely come back. And as much as I want things to go back to normal, I hate to see the good parts. Well, I don't think we'll ever be normal again. It's It'll all be new because, let's face it, normal, we screwed up the planet, we did that did all kinds of things that never should have been done. Uh, we abused animals. We, you know, of our resources. Yeah, horrible things to the planet. So and you saw how, in less than a month of us not doing things, our beaches and our shores started showing oh, improvement. <laughs> I live out here near Hanama Bay, and it's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. The fish are just beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, our fish have come back. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. So let's let's hope that when we do open up, and we must, that we figure out a new way of living, a new way of treating each other. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, what was I getting ready to say? Do I have a message here? I do. <laughs> I was thinking somebody was asking a question, but oh. they didn't. <laughs> we have an opportunity for people to ask questions, but we didn't. So, okay. Now, tell us how we can reach you um, and give us an email uh, for the organization and anything else that we can reach you. Should we, sure. should we need to, or anybody that's Absolutely. watching? Yep, you can reach us. Um, easiest way is our website. It's www.hawaiiancouncil.org. Um, you can see all of our programs. You can sign up for our email list over there. Um, so as we do updates, uh, we can definitely keep everybody informed. If you need to reach out to me, email is the easiest way. My email is richard at hawaiiancouncil.org. Um, my office line is 808-529-1622. Would you repeat that again? Your sure. office number? It is area code 808 529 1622. Thank you so much, Richard. It has been a real pleasure visiting with you. And hopefully, we'll get to do this again. Absolutely. Thank you so, Thank much. You so much for the opportunity. <laughs>